All right, guys. Uh, we have right now a situation that I want to talk. It's half guard, top. Uh, actually, I, I taught a private uh, Friday, and the guy asked about how can I like be comfortable in top position. What is my first step uh, when I when people pull me to half guard? And was a very Fernando was with me at the private. It was a very uh, interesting points that we learned together so this is why i want to i want to uh, talk this one i wasn't planning to show exactly those de those details but as the private ran so well so i want to also share with you guys so the guy he brought brought me up the question is about how can i beat frames shield sorry and how can i control my opponent's upper body because a lot of times when we have half guard top we kind of struggle to uh, 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 get pressure on top in the gi, as we have like access to collar and, and, and belts and whatever, we can kind of pull ourselves uh, against the opponent's frames, but it's not necessary, uh, and also it's not enough if you want to beat frames and shields, right? So, we're gonna see two different approaches uh, to beat his shields and frames. First one, we're gonna come up on the, on, on the feet and then just a little bit, just to elevate uh, the level a little bit, use head position and walk to flat Fernando's uh, uh, back on the mat. And the second option, we're just gonna use some uh, 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 steps around with knees on the floor. So the point here that you guys have to learn about is every time I'm sitting on my knees, even if I even if I hold Fernando's gi, I can't apply pressure. Why? Because even if I pull myself like using the, uh, like uh, my whole energy here is gonna be hard to making him uh, feel my body weight so most of the times when you guys get top position your pressure not most of the times every time you guys get top position your pressure comes from your head position not from your grips your grips only gives you support uh, to maintain top position and also find some balance in situations that you're working with your legs in a weird uh, uh, configuration but your head, let's say that I'm here, I have my both knees on the mat, and I have access to belt on the back. You guys can, can you guys can't see, but you guys understand what I'm saying. And you guys can have access to the collar. He can avoid this kind of collar. He can kind of fight against my arm, but at some point it's gonna be easy to grab the collar, right? So if I keep myself on my knees with my head high, and I try to pull my elbows against my body to apply pressure, Fernando is, of course, he's feeling my strength, but he's not getting tired from uh, this type of action. If instead of keep my head high and use my elbows to apply pressure, I just uh, 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 I just generate enough uh, tension here on my arms to find some extra balance, and I start to drop my head positions, my head position, and it's pro back. So I start to switch my body weight from the mats to my upper body. So it means the more I move on top, the more I make it closer, more Fernando has to push me away, yeah, to not uh, allow me to connect chest to chest. So it's always a battle about where my head is being placed and where his frame is. is. So I can relax here, of course, if you want to install the match or if you want to just not be effective and pass the guard, you can literally like stay on the knees here not uh, allow him do anything and also you can progress but if you want to be a good jiu-jitsu fighter you have to start to use your head position on top in any scenario you are so it, it means wide the legs move the head closer to your opponent's far shoulder like here and then you can start to generate pressure and then find your your ways to get chest to chest so first method we're gonna do as i know that every time he side on his upper body frames and his shields will work well. Either shield on the hip or on the shoulder. Uh, because his side on his body configuration helps him to not spend energy to, to frame. My goal is to start to flat him on the mats. Because every time I flat him on the mats, he has to use two actions. One, he has to hip scape and bring, yeah, hip scape and bring his shield back. So it means he has to move one step more to recover his soul. Every time I flat him, his legs are in a vulnerable position. Any distance he creates between his knee and his chest, 
he's just weaker and weaker. So when he starts to move his leg, it's super easy for me to drop my level and then control his hip. And second uh, 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 difference that we have for flatting my opponent is when he's side on, I'm fighting against, not just the upper body, I'm fighting against, because he's side on, I'm fighting against his bones. The frames are strong when he's side on because I can't smash his arms, right? So it's literally his joints that is uh, uh, carrying my body weight. When he's flat, because I did a good job walking around the hip, every time I drop my body weight here, so the minimum effort I do, shaking my body on top, look at how his arms shakes in a different way. It just happens because he's benching press me right now. So it's, he, it's not your joints that is holding me on top. It's your strength because he has to bench press me. So this is why we have to flat the opponent first and then second we have to fight to get chest to chest and to get under hooks and use head position to apply pressure and, and everything you guys probably know but also we are talking again right now. So flat your opponent is your main goal in half guard. And this is why we are uh, talking about those uh, uh, quick details to help you uh, uh, guys in that scenario. So how are we gonna flat him right now? Hand on the bell, hand on the collar, first method on the feet. So I come up on my feet like that, and then instead of try fight against his upper body, I'm just gonna get stuck on his frames and shields. So I have to walk around his hip. So how I do this, this knee, that I have uh, 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 outside half guard. So I'm gonna start to drop my head level and apply pressure on his upper body. My outside leg from half guard, I'm gonna come and point inside to inside my opponent's hip, right here. So I'm gonna shift my body and point both knees the same direction. So right now my head position, I keep dropping myself over Fernando's frame and I'm gonna step around with the leg I have inside half guard. So first one, I cut against the hip Second one, I open my leg and walk around, flatting his hip and back on the mats. So in here, I feel I cannot apply pressure, just having my head up and grip, so first step, drop head position. So I start to feel his pressure on the frames. So I come up on my knees. So when Fernando tries to push me away, it's gonna be very difficult. So I, what I do, cut my knee, my outside leg against the hip, widen my leg and walk until I get this position, the first pit stop we have. I, I normally call to my students, chest to hips. So my chest is inside Fernando's hips. I can touch my own knee, like here, with my elbow, and I can kind of lock my body in that situation. So I have hand on the collar, and I can pretty much avoid any kind of uh, uh, hip movement that Fernando can can apply even if he bumps against me, I can keep my chest connected, or even if he bumps outside, it's hard. It's I'm in a very tight position. So this first uh, pit stop helps a lot you guys to build chest chest connection. So second thing that we're gonna do right now, we're gonna apply pressure on the upper body without losing uh, uh, the control we have on the hips. And how we do this? So when I'm moving my head to apply pressure on the upper body uh, frames. If I move my head to the same side of a passing half guard, it's so easy for Fernando to push me away and bring his shields back, and then we are done. We have to uh, work uh, around his shields again and start from zero. So every time I'm applying pressure on top, because I have my support from the hand on the collar, and this also this hand on the belt, I can move with freedom easily. So I'm going to start to use my head position on diagonal line, like here, covering his shoulder. While I'm doing this, I start to gain space with my outside arm, like here. So I start to cover everything and control my opponent's shoulder. So I can literally post my hand like here, or if I have access to the collar, I can also grab the collar. But grab the collar is going to be too much work in the real scenarios and, and, and quick transitions, so just the hand on the sh shoulder is fine.